Hey crafty friends! It's Elizabeth with BB's Butterfly and today I have a little bit of a different um, video. I had a couple of requests for how, um, asking for how I did these little um, roses using uh, UT and I don't actually have the mold um, because when I made these a friend was over and she had the mold for these but basically it's the same concept that I'm going to show you today. Um, I have a butterfly in UT. I also have these awesome little embellishments. Um, I have these that I made. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is a... Um, Oh, whatever you call it. Anyway, I don't know if you can see those real well. Um, but it's all made with UT. And what UT is, is basically ultra thick embossing enamel. And this one is by Ranger. Um, it's just basically really thick embossing powder. So... I thought I would show you a little bit about how that happened and how you can color it and what you, kind of just some different techniques, what you can do with it. Um, so I have my melting pot and it's already hot. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in um, the UD. And this kind of takes a lot when you're using molds and things. So um, I've gone through like three of these containers, just plain. Um, so I'm just gonna let that melt um, and then I'll show you how to color it. But I also have some molds that I made. Um, sorry about the light. So there's this one that I made from a metal embellishment. Um, this one I also made from like a jewelry um, frame. And I have a key. I just used um, a key charm and I made a key out of this mold. And you can buy it at, at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but it's basically a two part putty stuff that you mix together and you make a rubber mold. Um, so we're going to play around. Um, these, this is a little sugar skull that was made from a candy mold. These were made out of candy molds or um, soap molds, but they have to be the silicone kind, otherwise they get really hot. Um, and let me just show you, this is a pumpkin. So I have a pumpkin for Halloween or fall. Um, that's also made out of one of the Wilton um, silicone molds. So, something like that. These are pretty deep, so they take a lot, um, so I don't fill them all the way up. Um, that's why they're kind of thin. The uh, rose molds, we did fill completely, so it's pretty thick. But they're, they're lightweight, and it's basically plastic. You're not going to break it. Um, and these I made just out of some scrap beauty um, leftovers. So, all right, let's take a look and see... Yes, we're getting really melted. If you can see my, my melting pot. You don't want to stir this too much um, before it gets completely melted. Otherwise, you get a bunch of air bubbles and then you kind of have a mess. So try to just kind of let it do its thing. But you don't want to overheat it because then it starts turning yellow. Unless you're going to color it. If you're going to color it, then you know that doesn't really matter. Um, you definitely need a heat proof surface and um, a silicone spatula, a heat resistant spatula. All right, that's pretty well melted. The great thing about these non stick craft mats is you can lay it down and it won't stick. So I'm going to move some of this out of my way. This one is a lot of fun to do. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do it um, with a stamp. 
All right, so first things first, I'm gonna show you how to color it. You don't wanna use anything liquid um, in your UD to color it. Alcohol inks won't work, paint won't work. Um, anything that's, that's a liquid base, you don't wanna use in there because it won't do anything. But you can use some of your um, embossing powders that are colored. I also have some pastels that I like to grade up in real fine. Um, and I also have this, which is a lot of fun because um, it is actually, it looks like embossing powder or it looks like mica powder, but it's really just eyeshadow. I just had a bunch of colors that I didn't use. Um, and so I scraped them out of their little um, pots and I put them in these little jars. And this butterfly was colored, um, the UD was colored with this eyeshadow, so it does work. Um, I have, let's see, I don't think this key was colored with it. Um, this one was colored with um, some, was colored with this eyeshadow that I scraped out. So that works. Um, this was colored with a combination of um, colored pink beauty. Oh, I got funky hands today. Um, pink beauty and some of the pastels. As you can see, we just scraped off some of the pastels into the beauty. Um, so I think I. The other great thing is, once you're finished with your spatula, you set it down, let it cool, and then you can just remelt it so you don't waste anything. So anything that you're doing with UD, if you have leftovers or just a little bit left that you're scraping out, that's why I made these little um, flat back pearl things. And you can make them teeny tiny or big. You can put rhinestones in the center. Um, glitter, obviously. This one is just colored with um, gold glitter. So let's get started with something. I'm not sure. I'll go ahead and use some of the eyeshadow. I have some bronzy colored eyeshadow that I, I made. Um, so I'm just gonna, you don't need a lot. You see that's just very little. Suckers smoking, and I don't know why. I do know why. I put the eyeshadow on the hottest part, which is in the center. So it was kind of burning the eyeshadow. But once you put in your eyeshadow, you can just stir, stir, stir until you like it either swirly or if you want full color uh, mixed in, you just keep stirring. The more you stir, the better mixed your um, whatever color you put in there will be. So this was, like, like I said, it was a bronzy um, mica eyeshadow. And you can see, if I can put some on my spatula here, kind of what that looks like. That cool just a bit. So you can see kind of what that looks like. And, you know, the more, like, again, the more you mix, the better the color will be the more um, even it will be. If you like it swirly, leave it swirly. All right, so I kind of like that, um, but I think I want it a little shinier. So I have a bunch of glitter, um, and this is just regular glitter that, you know, Martha Stewart glitter or cheap dollar store glitter. Um, let's see what color. I think I'm going to go with, 
think I'm just going to go with this one. This one's kind of pretty. It's a, a light gold. Just going to sprinkle some of that in there. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to mix that in. Again, just mix it. If you like it marbly, leave it, you know, not fully mixed. If you want it completely even, keep mixing until you get it to where you want it. And then when you're there, you can set your little spatula aside. And I'm going to do this mold right here. And all you do is set your mold down. and just pour the UD into the mold and be careful because it is very hot. Until you get it about as full as you want it and I almost burned myself. That was, that was really hot. Okay, let me let that dry for a second. And I have something sticky on my fingers. I don't know what it is. That's why I keep baby wipes around. All right, and then you let whatever mold you're using, you just let it cool completely. Okay, so while that's cooling, I'm going to show you um, how the pastels how you can kind of change the color a little bit just by grading in some pastels. And I think I'm going to do, since this is kind of a brownish color, um, and it is a little translucent, um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and make it opaque by adding brown um, pastel. And all you need to do is just Take something and shave in some of that pastel color. I know you people that are artists are freaking out right now, going, what is she doing? And this was a um, pastel set that I got, actually I got it at the um, thrift store, but it's um, Master's Touch Fine Art Studio. I think you can buy this at Hobby Lobby. Um, sorry. And I believe the the original price, oh, there it is, was um, $12.99. But I got it for $2.99. And it was hardly ever used. Because there, there are only a couple of places that you can tell it was even used. So, anyway. Alright, so I scraped some of that in here. And now I'm going to stir it some more. And it's turning it just a shade darker and the more the more colors you add to it the more pastels you add the darker the color will be the more vi vibrant it'll be if you don't think it's sparkly enough you can add more glitter um, if you don't like it you can dump it out or you can make like I made those little um, flat back pearls so um, I think I'm going to show you those because those are super easy. All you do is get, a, you know, a little bit on your spatula and just do droplets. You have to be kind of careful because the stuff cools rather quickly. And it, it makes drops all on its own just by letting it kind of slide off your spatula. And you can do teardrop shapes. Like that. See, I'm just letting it 
kind of fall off my spatula to like, you know, make whatever I want, just like that. And when those cool, like some of these are probably already cool, if you have a nonstick craft mat, they just kind of pop off your, pop off your mat. And then you have something like that. Do it that way. See, about the size of a freckle. And they're, you know, a little bean. And then if you don't like them, if you don't like the way something came out, if you've got extra strings, you can just throw them back in your pot and remelt them. Or if maybe you think these teeny tiny ones are way too teeny tiny, drop them back in your pot and they melt. All right, and then if you want to make like these, all you have to do, I've got a ton of them, uh, all different sizes. Um, so just pick a size that you want to use. If you have beads, the same thing will work because this stuff is like glue. Um, it'll work. You don't have to you know, use any glossy accents or anything like that. Um, we're just going to take a bit, make a big dab of whatever, kind of a circular shape. It's more of a teardrop shape. Then I'm going to take my rhinestone and just kind of drop it in there. I should probably be using my tweezers, but I don't know where they are. And then I'm just kind of pressing it in there. And when that cools, you have an instant jewel. And I don't know how well you saw that, because um, I can't get that close to it, but when it cools, see, okay, see this is already cool. Remember the mold we did, the, the little frame? And when you pop it out, it looks like that. And then you can set if you have, um, I wish I could, I can't think of the name of these, whatever. If you have these, obviously this frame is a little bit too small, but they can set in there like that. It makes very pretty jewelry. Um, let's see. This I have yet to try, so I think I'm going to try it as a mold. Oh, look, our rhinestone's already done. So there's the little rhinestone shape I made. Okay. So I'm going to try this one. This one is not as deep because the piece that I used to create this mold was very thin. So we're just going to test it out and see what happens. This may be a total fail and that's okay too. If you don't like it, you can remelt it. What you don't want to do is try to do a double pour because then parts of it starts cooling and um, it just doesn't work out real, real well. So we'll see. I didn't obviously have enough, so my mold isn't completely full, but we'll see what that looks like in a few minutes. All right, I am going to just scrape this out and I'm going to show you the little butterfly that I did. Oh, see if I can keep from burning myself. I wish they would make these with a little tiltable pot so that you don't burn the crap out of yourself. Maybe I'll write to them and say, hey, it would be nice if. All right, give that a second.
Okay, to to clean this out, because you're gonna have some left, um, to clean it out, all you need are some paper towels. Now, this is where you want to be extremely careful because this stuff is super hot and you can burn yourself. So whatever you do, you do not want to touch the sides because this little metal thing will definitely burn the crap out of you. You also do not want to turn this hot plastic, essentially, onto your hand. So um, you can just set that one down and let it cool. Grab another paper towel and go again. And just try to wipe as much as you can out of there. Again, be very careful because it's super hot. This part up front, the little pour spout, it's not as hot. Um, it's actually the coolest part of the, the metal, um, which makes it a little bit difficult to clean out. Because it's hard to get down in there. Alright, just about there. in this one little corner. All right, that's pretty good. All right, and this is pretty much cooled off. So you can just peel it off and save it for later. That's pretty cooled off. So that'll go in a bucket, a scrap bucket for later. All right, let's check out our little flat piece that we did because it's pretty cool. Uh-oh. Apparently I'm shedding and now I have my own hair in there. That's funny. Anyway, I don't know if you can see that real well, but you, you can see the design. The only thing I don't like about this, and I haven't figured out um, yet what to do, but when you put it in a mold, these, these rubber ones, um, it comes out very flat. Like the color isn't shiny. Um, let's see if I can show you the difference. Okay, here's one. So here's the the top. You know, when it sits in the mold, this is the 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 top part. So it you can tell it's really shiny. This other side is kind of flat. And so I think the only way to do something with that is to maybe um put uh some clear fingernail polish or something like that over it. Maybe that'll make it shiny. All right, so we're going to make this butterfly. Only we're not gonna do it in black. We're gonna do it in something else. Gonna have to get some more of that. I'm almost out. Um, let's see. Let's do it in this pastel um, periwinkle color. Now normally I would wait till this melted before I started grinding stuff up into it, but I'm not going to this time. Just for the sake of this video. And I'm just scratching some, some of this pastel into it. I think this is kind of like chalk, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I'm not an artist. I mean, I'm an artist in my own right, but I don't mess with, I don't draw and paint and all that, you know, I'm not that awesome. All right, so this is starting to melt. I'm just going to put the lid back on for a little bit because honestly, putting the lid back on your melting pot while your UD is melting is um, the best way to do it because it kind of keeps the heat inside. So while that's doing that, I'm going to 
move some of this because I'm going to need some a pretty large surface. These are awesome because you can use these on um, cards or you know like the little wax seals that that people use whenever they seal an envelope. Um, this is a card I made um, but I just want to show you kind of what that would look like on on a card as a an embellishment or on a tag. I mean, obviously this tag is too small, but if you, you know, put it on a tag that what's really cool is kind of the, the, um, background design of the tag kind of shows through. So that's kind of cool. Um, here's the tag I, I was working on. I'll show this in another project, but, um, wouldn't that be awesome on a foil tag? That would be cool. So you can use these for lots of things. All right, checking on the UD. Looks pretty melted. Um, so I'm gonna stir in that pastels, the pastel that I ground up into it. See what that looks like. You can also use the like perfect pearls. That'll give it more of a shimmer, um, like a pearlescent color. And when I say perfect pearls, I mean the, the powder. You can use mica powders, um, anything, again, that is that is dry, like a powder. Um, you don't don't want to use anything liquid. It just for some reason there's something about it. It just doesn't mix in. All right, that looks pretty good. This is more of a a pastel blue, but that'll work. Kind of wanted more of a pastel purple, but. We'll go with that because you know me, I like purple. Okay, so that looks pretty mixed. I'm gonna give that just a few more, few more minutes um, while I prepare my stamp. So what you're gonna need is a stamp. And this is just a, a cheap butterfly stamp that I got at, at Michael's um, and stays on ink. Um, I haven't tried this with any of the other inks. I imagine you can use other inks, but the stays on is actually going to adhere to the plastic and it'll stay, um, the black ink will stay on there. Like I said, I haven't tried any other inks, so I don't know. But what you want to do is take your ink pad and ink up your image. Get it pretty inky because this is also going to help release the, um, stamp from the UD. Okay, so that's pretty inked up. Move that over just a bit. All right, and you got to be quick because the stuff dries pretty fast. So you also want a pretty large flat area and I probably should have chosen a smaller stamp, but that's all right. So I want to get as much as I can on there. You can kind of spread it around maybe a little bit, not too much because it dries really super fast. So I'm going to do just a butterfly wing here and you just kind of want to set it on top. You don't want to mash because you can, if you mash, you get more translucent. If you set it, it kind of just dries around it. Um, and then once it starts to really harden, then you can kind of push and make sure you get the ink into the UD. Turn that off before I burn myself. And then you just kind of let it let it cool. Um, you don't want to lift this off before this is cool, because if you do that, then your UD just kind of looks gooey and and clumpy. Oh, I touched it just to test it, and it's not it's not cool yet. So. We'll wait. While we're waiting, I'm going to throw that back in there and probably sh should be using my uh, stone protector, but that's all right. I have a slate 
piece of slate that I like to use for um, hot stuff. I guess I'll turn that back on. Forgot I turned it off. Because uh -huh. I want to add a little bit of glitter and do some of these, some more of these little flat back pearl things. This time, for this, I'm I'm just doing cleanup so you can kind of see how you have just a little bit left in the in the pot. Um, so I'm just playing cleanup here. I don't like to waste anything. So um, I'm using some iridescent glitter. And just a little bit. It's because I want to give I want to give it some sparkle. So I'm just going to mix that in. The center of your melting pot is the hottest place. So if you find that your maybe your UD is not melting real well, uh, just kind of scoop it up to the center, and it will it'll melt a whole lot faster because that's the hottest part of your pot. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of these pearls. Oh, these are going to be pretty. Just some little droplets. So if you watch my swap reveal video, um, this is how I made all of the little um, plastic looking embellishments. Or resin looking, whatever you want to call them. I just used my melting pot and some beauty. I was just goofing off and it worked. All right, that's probably pretty good. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape this all to one spot here. Okay. So let's check our butterfly. It looks fun already. And we're just gonna peel this off very carefully so that you don't break it, because you can break it. You can also bend it, which we don't want. So I'm just peeling that off. And now I have this awesome partial butterfly. And I think that will look so great on a card. I think that's gonna be pretty awesome. I like it. All right, and that's all there is to it. Um, so get out your melting pots, get out your UD, and just play around with it. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise. So if there's something else you wanna see, um, just comment, like, Click on the link um, to my uh, other videos. I'll link to the um, the swap reveal video so that you can see how I use these as, as decorations. Um, feel free to subscribe. And if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know. So, all right, that's it for now. Bye.